Hi everyone and welcome back to my craft room. My name is Kelsey. I also call myself Dinosaur Mama and I am so excited for our SVG tutorial today on how to make a shadow box template. If you have never made a shadow box before, this was one of the projects that got me hooked on paper crafting and Cricut crafting in general. They are so much fun to make. They are sort of easy to assemble um, and they look beautiful. Like they're a really awesome home decor piece that you can make yourself. If you haven't already, please go back to my Inkscape 101 playlist and start binging those if you are just starting your SVG tutorial as the shadow box tutorial is going to be a little more advanced and I'm gonna use some lingo that I've taught in my previous videos like the SVG basics video. And if you haven't yet, please consider subscribing to my channel to help me continue to grow so I can keep bringing you new videos every single week. So let's get to designing the shadow box template. The first thing you're gonna grab in Inkscape is a square. Most shadow boxes are square, so we're gonna make an eight by eight shadow box. I have mine already changed into inches and you can change that over here. And I am going to do that um, eight by eight because there's a lot of eight by eight shadow boxes. Then I'm grabbing the inside shape and I'm just going to stick with a normal circle. I'm gonna make it slightly smaller than my square. I'm changing the color so I can see the two layered on top of each other. Then I'm going to make sure I have both selected and I am going to difference those. So I have both of them selected, I go to path and then difference and that will remove the circle from the center. And you wanna make sure that you have your circle centered before you do that difference and you can do that over in the align and distribute part of all of your functions. For our next step, I'm going to grab a text box. I think text is a really great way to start with SVGs, especially if you aren't an artist. Um, so I'm just grabbing a text box and I am going to change the font to like a boxy font, just so it's a little bit easier to work with and a little bit simpler. And I just downloaded this one from Creative Fabrica and it works perfectly for the shadow box. I also like working with Creative Fabrica fonts because you can use them for commercial use. So we first have to change this into a usable font and I have a whole separate video on that which I will link below and you have to change your fonts into a usable font um, meaning like an, making it into an SVG or your Cricut will give you a warning that it's using a text that's not readable basically within the program. So first I made it into a readable font and now I'm breaking them apart and I kept that O for now, but I'm gonna delete it and make it into a cute flower and I'm just distributing these um, throughout the piece. Um, this is really where you get to be creative and where you wanna place your stuff, where you wanna make your SVG. I'm just showing you how to create the layers for a shadow box. And take your time with your placement and where you want everything to go. Because remember, you also want this to make sense when it's put into a paper form. What also you need to realize is when you change your font into a usable font or an SVG, um, you are also making it have nodes so you can manipulate that font a little bit. So I did make that L a little bit longer. Um, so that it kind of matched with the V a little bit. Um, so that is something that is also really great about making the fonts into an SVG and having a path. Once you have your placement of your letters, um, I, I again, I'm manipulating my letters to make them fit the way I want to um, by using the nodes. So definitely check out the tutorial that I have about you making this into a usable font. Um, once you have it placed, we're not going to union anything just yet because we want to have each letter on its own layer. So we're going to just have everything placed. We don't want to move anything. You want to keep it exactly where it is. And then we can start creating our layers. So before we start making all of these layers and attaching everything, let's make a quick flower. Um, flowers are actually pretty easy to make. Um, not if you're doing like you know, something like a, a lotus or um, I have a orchid file on my on my blog for free. But um, some flowers are really simple to make, like a basic daisy is just petals across from each other that you layer. Um, so I'm grabbing some ovals and I am aligning them so they are centered but have some space in between them. 
and then I am going to duplicate and rotate them. So I duplicated them by just right clicking, going down to duplicate, and then I just use the rotate button at the top. Now your next step is to union those. So I go path to union and then I duplicate again. Um, I was doing copy and paste, so I have that stuck in my head, but I do go to duplicate. That way I know they're perfectly centered. And then you're gonna go to transform. You'll get this screen by going to object and then transform. And I am going to rotate this. Um, so you go to rotate and I'm just gonna do 45 degrees. Make sure you're clicked on what you need to be clicked on and then do 45, not 0.45, but 45 degrees. Now I'm going to take these again and I am going to union them. So again, grab both and then go to path and then union. That will make it one usable SVG together, all cut together. And now I wanna make a center, but because we're using layers, I wanna make sure all of these petals are connected. So I'm gonna grab a circle, then I'm gonna do a slight, um, slightly smaller circle or an inset, and I am going to do a cutout of that circle. So I am duplicating, I'm gonna to go to path and then inset. You can also just make a smaller circle, um, but I'm gonna inset it a few times with my shortcut, and I'm gonna grab those two circles, go to path again, go to difference, and now I have a cutout circle and we will fill that in a minute. And once you have that circle that's cut out centered to the rest of your flower, you can union those together as well. So now I'm just going to change my color. I'm going to duplicate this um, and change my color. And now I'm going back to that rotate screen and I'm gonna do 22.5, that's in between 45, and that's gonna lay perfectly on top of our other flower. Now let's duplicate that new layer one more time. And now we're gonna to go to path and then break apart. And that's gonna fill in our center and then you can either delete the center or union it. Um, I'm just going to change the color and um, delete that center. That way I don't have to go through unionizing it. I just needed a full solid flower. And now I'm gonna change the color of that flower. And this is going to be the center of our flower and you're gonna send it back and then you'll see it. So now we have three layers to our flower, a center and two different color petals. Now your next step is going to be choosing your colors. So I'm just gonna choose some spring colors, but then I'm also going to show you later on how to bring in an outside picture, like a palette, a color palette, and you can use the colors off there to choose your colors. So I'm just changing these for now, um, just for layering sake. You want each layer to be a different color. And now we are going to start making our layers. Before we start our layers, you're gonna to wanna to duplicate that pink circle square. So you're gonna to wanna to start with your top layer. So you're gonna grab that square with the circle that we made in our top layer of our flower. And you're gonna to go to path and then you're going to union. And so now we have our top layer. It went all the way to the back, but you can just push it back up to the front. And now you have your top layer. Now right click, duplicate, grab the top layer that we just made, grab your next layer down of your petals and hit union and then send it back one. You want to continuously be duplicating these layers, grabbing your next layer that you want in your shadow box and unioning it. So I duplicated the yellow layer that we just made. I am going to grab that pink center of the flower and now I'm going to path and I'm going to union. And we're gonna to continue to do this for every layer. So I have that pink layer that we just made of the center. I'm duplicating it. I'm sending it back a little bit. I'm grabbing that and the L, that's what I'm gonna start with. I'm gonna to go to path and union. And then I'm going to duplicate the L layer. And then I'm going to grab that V with the L layer or the E, whatever you wanna go with. And I'm going to duplicate and then I'm going to union it onto the V. Then I'm gonna duplicate the V layer we just made. I'm gonna grab the E with that new duplicate, and then I'm going to union that layer as well. So it's over and over. Duplicate, grab the new piece that you want on your layer, and union. Duplicate, grab the new piece, union. And once you have all of your layers completed, you are ready to make your back of your shadow box. And so I wanted it to stand out just a little bit. I am going to duplicate it one more time. I am going to send back one of the layers all the way to the back. 
and then I am going to change this top layer to a darker color because I kind of want to do an offset um, with a darker color so it stands out. So I broke that apart. I'm going to send that back just a few um, and then I am going to change that back color so I can see it. And I'm going to grab all of the pieces that are this light green by going select the same, right click, select the same, union. And then I'm going to inset these a little bit, like one or two times, nothing crazy. And then I'm going to difference that. So I'm grabbing this lighter green piece. You'll see all the nodes. I'm going to grab the darker uh, green square in the back and I'm going to go to path and then difference, just like we had done earlier with the circle. And that's gonna give us a little offset in the center without changing um, the outside perimeter. And I'm gonna send that all the way to the back and you see this little outline now, it's very, very subtle. I am going to duplicate our top layer one more time because I need a backing for my shadow box. And this is similar to when we broke apart the flower for the center. So you're just gonna um, duplicate that top layer, Go to path, break apart, and then you can delete that center circle, change the color, and send it all the way to the back. And you change the um, layers, and when I say send to the back, right up here. Now you can use this as is and send this over to your Cricut, and it will layer all of your images, and it'll be ready to cut. This shadow box is ready to go. However, I want to show you how to change the color palette using... Um, a color palette you find online. So you can just Google spring color palettes and then you're gonna paste it, you're gonna copy and paste it right from Google into Inkscape. So here I grabbed this spring color palette and now I'm going to grab my layer and you're gonna go to the eyedropper and you're just gonna click on the color that you want for each layer. Then I go through and I send them back just like we did before and I go through each layer and change each color with the eyedropper. And here we have our final shadow box SVG file. So you'll see I have nine layers in total. Each one has a new object added onto that layer. So when we go to build this, you'll see a lot of height and change in each layer. It's really a fun file to make, no matter what your theme is, whether it be spring or Halloween or um, Christmas. It's just, these are such fun files and projects to make. They are the one of the first projects that I made and what I really fell in love with when I started using my Cricut. And then when you bring it over into Cricut Design Space, you'll be able to upload this right on um, to your canvas and you'll see all the layers and it should stay that eight by eight size as well. And so you'll see all the layers over to the right and you can send this right to your machine and start cutting. So for this particular project, I cut out all my layers with a 65 pound cardstock. I prefer to use for my paper crafting, uh, basil paper or basil paper, um, which is 80, uh, 80 pound cardstock. It's a little bit thicker and it's textured. Um, but for this project, just for the colors, I use 65 pound cardstock and it really will be your preference. What colors you want to use if you want to add glitter or foil or whatever but I am peeling my pieces away from the mat and I'm just flipping the mat over and kind of curling it back. And then I'm making sure that my layers are in the proper order before we start putting them all together with foam tape. You definitely want to make sure that you have them in the proper order before you just start assembling. And if you're using a Cricut, remember your Cricut is not cutting it in order of the layers, they're cutting it in um, color order. So you have to put them in order yourself. So just make sure that you're seeing all of your layers when you are organizing them. And then my last suggestion is going to be to be checking for any little pieces that might have been stuck into your cuts. So make sure you clean up all of your layers. And then I have everything organized and we are ready to start assembling. So you'll see I have all of my layers here ready to go. I'm double checking for little pieces. And now we can start layering with our foam tape. I am going to be using the Barely Arts Cubies. Their packs come with squares along with strips and they come in two different heights. I'm going to use the smaller height and if you are using these, which I will link below in the description, 
Make sure you end up using the same height for her, um, both if you're using the squares and the strips. You don't want to have um, really tall squares and really small strips, and then your um, shadow box is going to be all wavy and wonky. So I'm going to grab their strips, and um, these are pretty long. They're about uh, six or seven inches long. And so I'm going to use um, one at the top, one at the bottom, and one on each side to give my shadow box some structure. And then I'm going to use the cubes, the little squares, throughout the file, like on the E and the V, to make sure that those are sturdy and not falling flat onto the next layer. And you are going to be repeating this process for every layer that we do. So I'm only gonna show one layer because this does take a little bit of time to put all of the foam squares out and then take all of the little strips off. And so I just want to show you one of them and then you can use the same technique throughout. And I am starting from the back and working my way up. So make sure you're putting your foam tape on the correct side. You'll see that my love looks mirrored and I'm putting the foam tape on the back. And then I'm doing my very best here to line this up. And if you are using Barely Arts Cubies, be very specific when you put these together because I promise you they are nearly impossible to rip off. It will rip your paper guaranteed. So you have to be very careful once those are secured because if they are secured and flattened down, there's like no moving your cubies. So I took my time here and, well, I tried to and make this as even as possible and you're gonna wanna do that for every single layer. So really be patient with yourself as you're layering so that you don't have wonky sides and everything um, lines up beautifully. And I'm just lightly pressing throughout and now we have our first layer done. That foam gives a nice height in between the layers and you're gonna repeat this for all of the layers for every single step. Just make sure you're doing them in the right order. So here we have our last layer, our frame layer, and of course on my last layer, I was a little off, I'm not gonna lie, but um, I did put it on and I really love the way the shadow box ended up looking. I thought it was really beautiful with all the different colors um, and all the layers. It had a good amount of height. This was a nine layered shadow box. So it really was nice and thick and perfect for spring. My biggest suggestions are to just be patient with yourself when you're layering. Do your best to line up everything as clearly as possible and um, just have fun when you're creating. I, I love all the colors that I did. You can always duplicate colors to make different um, shadows and different color layers. It's This is just such a fun project. I truly love making shadow boxes. They're one of my favorites. Thank you so much for joining me today for this shadow box SVG tutorial. I hope you learned a lot and had fun making this design. If you have any questions, comments, please don't forget that you can leave any of that below and I am happy to answer them for you. And if you're looking for more SVG tutorials, please don't forget to subscribe because I will be bringing you new tutorials every week on a different technique. Stay crafty.